Welcome to Pipecast. This is another filler episode. Today we're going to be reviewing Latakia rolls. I'm going to let Patrick here talk a little bit more about it. All right, so what we have here is uh, McBaron Latakia rolls, um, and it is made up of a uh, what we think is a bright Virginia wrapper, and then inside of that is Latakia and Dark Pirate Kentucky. And, I mean, you can pretty much see that right there. It, it's It's got that outer rim of Virginia, and then just that dark core, um, which is some kind of combination of Latakia and Dark Fire Kentucky. So, yeah, so that was McBaron's Latakia Rolls. Um, a very, you know, when we talk about other types of medallions and coins, I know we just recently spoke about vapor coins. It's definitely more in the line of, like, Cabby's Mixture from Samuel Gall. Cabby's Mixture, a special curly uh, by yeah. Peter Heinrich. Yeah, it's very, it's a, the word I would use is um, um, broken, like a broken coin, kind of. They Those smaller coins seem like a little bit more difficult. Yeah. They're, they're sort of like a nickel cut or a quarter cut, like it's, as opposed to like what would be like a, those larger uh, rolls, like the Navy rolls, the Escudo. They're more like a half dollar kind of thing. Going yeah, on. and, and I, I didn't mean broken. What I meant was uh, tumbled. It feels like it was a smaller coin, like you said, but it got tumbled uh, because they're very loose, kind of, very a, a loose coin. When you look at the, the way that, say, uh, Navy Deluxe, Escudo, uh, Curly Block especially, are put together, I mean, they're, it, you know, I know that the way that they do that kind of, uh, twist or rope mm. is with rope. You know, they, they yeah. tie it around yeah. with rope. But it seems like that the pressure exerted on those larger coins is a lot more intense mm. than these smaller, yeah. curly cut, kind of small, nickel yeah. sized, quarter sized uh, uh, coins. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe, um, I think this is on the 10 or it could be on um, Tobacco Review's website, but I think they're sort of rolled up and maybe sort of cut into like a cigar kind of, and then they're stored somewhere for like five days, and then they slice them and tin them up. It's some kind of variation to that. It's not, it, they sort of let them sit in their rolled state before they slice them. So, I don't know. It, it's the first, I guess, non-vapor coin I've ever smoked. Yeah, I you know the medallions and coins just they're not very. I'm not saying they're not popular. They just don't come around a lot. Yeah. Um, probably a great example of what you're going to be looking at is if you get like uh, XX Black uh, Room mm -hmm. by Samuel Galwith or Brown Twist by Samuel Galwith. Those twists. Um, that's probably what you're looking at. I've smoked Maple and Cherry Twist, and then uh, uh, you know. A lot of people say you can chew it. I've tried. It's not, I wouldn't chew it. Mm, not I wouldn't, it's not really a good chewing tobacco. Mm. I mean, I'm, we're probably more used to a molasses syrupy uh, chewing, you know, in the South, really, but I guess in the States. Uh, but this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's really tough, you know. I mean, it's really, really, it's a tough chew, and it, it's not very flavorful. It's just... It's a really just a smoke, and the, and those ropes are really really strong. But yeah. I don't find that this is super strong. No, so uh, so you're the you're gonna be doing the first impression. Mm -hmm. I've I've had it. Well, as soon I ordered it as soon as the email started going out that there was that this was being released. Uh, I ordered some I think that that morning uh, that I saw the email, and I've been smoking smoking it for God, probably two weeks. And, um, so yeah, so this being your first review or your first impression, what do you, what do you think about it? So, um, I haven't smoked a lot of McBaron blends, uh, recently. I've smoked several, but I haven't smoked any in a long time. It feels like, it feels like I've been sort of in the American English camps of tobaccos instead of the like kind of Danish German camps. Um, with McBaron, it's uh, it's it's as it's as light as a Latakia as you're gonna possibly get. The Latakia is in this 
real perfect harmony with the dark fire and the smokiness is light really to say the least it's it's a it's a lighter variation of a latakia i mean i'm used to like lap bombs or something with even like a little bit of latakia in the past will go quite a long way this seems like much 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 lighter um and it sort of gets overtaken by the dark fired and then it'll kind of relent and then you'll get more of that latakia um there's a touch of citrus in the background for the Virginia wrapping. Uh, it's really good when it kind of comes out, that, that citrus flavor, because it sort of sweetens everything. This is probably the most sweet Latakia blend that I've had in, in quite a while. That's just, it doesn't, it, it's all tobacco. This doesn't taste very artificial sweet. It doesn't taste like there's a topping sweet. It just feels like the culmination of the different tobaccos makes it into a sweet blend as opposed to a savory blend it's really nice um blended extremely well and you know i could definitely see it being someone who wants to experiment with english but is sort of like well i've smoked say like northwoods by boswell or um i, I don't want to use frog morton because i feel like that's since it's discontinued to be pointless but like a lighter you know, or a mix of a Cavendish and a Latakia. Um, everyone has their favorite. I don't really smoke them that much. Northwoods is kind of, kind of that bridger that I always like look to now. But if you're trying to get away from that bridger and you're looking to be like, well, let's just go straight without any type of Cavendish or any type of sweetener or enhancer, this is probably the way to go. It's extremely smooth. It's super enjoyable. It's probably not doing enough for me to to actually seek it out and return to it. Granted, this is a 7,500 limited release. They may, you know, reissue it at a certain point. I don't know if there's anything particularly special about this tobacco that would make it super limited. I don't know if that, you know, it, it's an experiment or a dry run or something that, you know, I've seen some limited releases that are just mainstays in Europe and they just sort of limit it mm. to these states. Mm. With that in mind, um, it's a very good tobacco. I recommend picking up a tin if you have the opportunity. Um, McBaron is really, I mean, they, the, the stuff that they produce, uh, I think they produce what, Old Dog Fired, Acadia. Um, Pure Virginia, Pure Latakia Virginia, Flake. Latakia Flake, Latakia Flake is really great. Latakia Flake is really the big brother to this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, of course, I've had HH uh, uh, Syrian. Yeah, which uh, I think we both had yeah, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's a really good blend as well. Can't get that anymore, unfortunately. I think it, it got replaced by H. H. Latakia Flake. Isn't no, it? it was. It's another one. I think it's called um, Balkan Mixture. No, uh, I think in America it got replaced by Bal Balkan Mixture, but in the European market it got replaced by something else, and I can't. It's it, the name is escaping me. It's on their website. It might be Vintage Latakia what they changed it to um oh. but well it was vintage serious so i mean yeah. like that makes sense but mcbaron produces really great tobacco um as i've said before i feel that like stg mcbaron even peter heinrich they tend to lean towards the sweeter aspects uh reiner is another great example of a sweeter blender blending house uh nothing wrong with that uh, like Reiner Gold is one of my favorite Virginia Pariks with a touch of white burley. And uh, also obviously Peter Heinrich has a uh, special uh, curly block and a special curly, which I like a lot. Not particularly sweet blends. Um, and then, of course, you have uh, Dark Strong, which is probably the best like Kentucky blend that you can get. But it is sweet. So it's something about that sort of Northern Europe kind of blending that really adds like i think a more sugary base it might be the types of leaves but i do believe it's more of a topping thing uh this has that sweeter characteristic not necessarily because of a topping uh more so because i just think the blend is in sort of perfect harmony hmm. well and with with only th an english blend with only three components i mean it sort of makes sense that to me that things are gonna there, there's enough room for everything to sort of show up 
you know, to not get overpowered by one mm -hmm. type, or, you know, one one type of leaf over the other. Um, that's a good point. This is kind of like one of those. Uh, I think this is one of those oddball things where it doesn't seem to make sense, but like you know, there's a a, a myriad history in mixology of a two to three part like mixture of a drink that makes a perfect drink. It's sort of lighter the better. You know, gin and tonic comes to mind. Uh, yeah. A uh, Jack and Coke, uh, you know, rum and Coke. Those kinds of like just two ingredient drinks uh, really show that you can just do a mm. lot with a little. And the same I think can be said for, you know, a small amount of tobacco varietals. Um, blended in perfect harmony and basically yeah. what you can get out of that. I think that's a pretty good proving ground for this. Yeah, and I would agree with pretty much everything that you've said about the blend. Um, it The harmony is real nice. You, um, when you get in there, the light of key is not there. I, I get, I think the first thing that I notice is more the, the Kentucky, the smokiness of the Kentucky. Because, you know, it's... it's it's somewhat distinguishable from the Latakia, and then just some of that that Latakia starts to show up, and then the sweetness from the Virginia sort of come in there and play. Um, so I would agree on all that. Uh, I think that its namesake is sort of misused um, because anytime I see Latakia in a blend's name, I don't necessarily expect a Latakia bomb, but I expect... Latakia to be the forward. Well, and that that goes for any um, any type of tobacco uh, varietal. If if one name is like sort of showcased in the blend, I expect that to dominate the blend. Um, you know, like I'm trying to like if you look at H H Vintage Syrian or H H Latakia Flake, I expect that to be the forefront, and that's sort of the case, and at least for my from my memory of Vintage Syrian, and I know from H.H. H. Latakia Flake, it, which is a, a great Latakia English, um, but Latakia is the, the star of the show. Um, so, in, and then like Acadian Perique, well, I wouldn't say Acadian Perique, we'll save that, we'll save that for another day. But, but a lot of times when, when there is an, a varietal in the blend name, that really should be the, the leader. In this one, being called Latakia Rolls, it just seems, I don't know, misused in a way. <laughs> and I don't want to knock the blend because the blend is good. It, it's well balanced. And I think if it's not if it's not limited because of some kind of special tobacco and it's just limited as a test run for a certain market, um, I definitely think it should come back and, and they should make more. It's just I feel like, a better Latakia rolls could have been saved for a different type of blend. Like to me, a Latakia roll is more worthy a name for like if you had a um, sort of like a, a, a medallion version of uh, Commonwealth, right, or Star of the East, right, where the Latakia percentage is way up there. That seems more in line with my thinking from a, I guess, a marketing standpoint. But because I can definitely see some people buying this, like like young guns in the in the tobacco world who who want that Latakia bomb, buying this and being disappointed and then having a solid opinion of the blend when it's really a, a good blend. Um, and then the same way I see older pipe smokers maybe avoiding it because they think it's a Latakia bomb, and it's not. So um, I, I haven't seen that, but I could see that possibility happening. Well, so. the name should, the name really does, will, will tell you a lot about something, or it yeah. should, I mean, I imagine. I mean, we can look at other McBaron examples. H.H. Latakia Flake is a heavier Latakia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Acadian, yeah, guess what? It's going to have Perique in it. Yeah, H.H. Pure Virginia. It's kind of, it's, I mean, it's a straight Virginia, it's but straight Virginia, you so. know that you don't even need really to read into, you don't even need to know what the blend type is to know that HH Pure Virginia more than likely is a straight Virginia. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess it is a little misleading. If you're smoking it, you'll find that it's much lighter, but not something that should be avoided. 
Mm -mm. Of course, if you are coming into this looking for a lat bomb, you, you won't get it. Yeah. This is a pretty much an... I think this could be an all-day smoking mixture. That's how light it is. But it's complex enough that as you smoke it, you'll be getting a lot of things out of it. Citrus, uh, there's a smoky aspect to it. There's a sweet aspect to it. There's sort of an earthy sort of flavor to it in there a little bit. Um, I wouldn't say that it... it the citrus is really nice. And mm -hmm. the citrus and the smoky have this aspect to it that really... It's just really balanced. You kind of have to smoke it. It's really hard to describe this blend. Yeah. But um, I think it's very even and very well done. Just on my first smoke. Yeah, and and I would say, you know, sort of looking at the, you know, it packs really well, especially if you, like, take three or four of them, stack them on top of each other, and you just stuff it in there. It, it packs really well. And it for me, it, it sort of provides a really long smoke if you do it that way. Yeah. Like, you could... You could load it in the morning, and if you you know if you smoke it, set it down, come back to it like for lunch, and then set it down again, come back to it for I don't know after dinner thing. It it it's it it's gonna last a while. Um, I know when I try to sit down and smoke it all in one sitting, it's gonna be like a two hour kind of thing for me. Yeah. But I, I and I tried uh, you know rubbing it out and sort of loading it that way. I don't, I didn't have luck with it. I wouldn't recommend it. Cause I usually, when I s smoke a blend, I, I'll, I'll vary it up. Sometimes I'll fold and stuff. Sometimes I'll rub it out. Um, just to sort of see what, cause sometimes you'll get different things out of it, especially if you're leaving it to sort of dry, you know, sometimes you'll get different kinds of, different things will show up. Um, not so much in the taste, but in the mouthfeel, the harshness and the, the edges of it. But um, I would recommend pretty much always just stacking your coins and loading them into here. I wouldn't. I wouldn't fool with rubbing it out. It does seem like that 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 the stacking kind of method does it. It probably is designed to be smoked sort of more like that. I think that all the component tobaccos, when turned into a coin, actually have a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. Or at least if what Patrick says right and the way I'm smoking is correct, that's the way it feels. It does yeah. feel like it's balanced to, a, to such an extent that like it really needs to be smoked as untampered as possible. Yeah, and I did notice a lot of people, because I've watched some reviews on it since I've been smoking it, um, before you know before or leading up to this video i've noticed some reviews where people are talking about how the latakia sort of doesn't show up until the middle of the bowl um i don't necessarily get that uh it definitely isn't there on first light but it's but it, it's definitely there for the whole bowl for me and in my in my different um in my different smokes of it so i don't know it it's a good blend, and I, I, some people said it sold out, but I think, I think like Watch City has some more in right now. Um, I don't know. Um, if you can get it, get it. <laughs> uh, and if you know, if you know somebody that's got some, you know, in a few years down the line, you know, you can probably borrow some or get some off of them. But um, I'd recommend trying it if you could. Yeah. I don't know how, what this would be like aging. I imagine it'll probably even mellow and smooth out even more. But it's a good blend out of the tin. So that's yeah. what I think. I think that this is totally worth your time. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.